Welcome to Cole Walters. Seriously, first things first, how many of you thought you would come to Boise and see an African girl get on stage to country music? Tell me, how many of you guys, right? Right? Game changer, okay? This is how you know you're in for something good. Now, speaking of being African, my parents have no idea what I do for a living. Um, I think a lot of you guys may relate. Oh, I'm a blogger. No, it pays the bills. No, it's like a real job. It's a thing. Uh, coming from corporate America and making six figures a year, well, my parents were like, you've got it made, right? You have an office, you have business card, right? <laughs> right? Every Friday, you get to go casual of business, you know? <laughs> like, my parents were proud of me, you know? And sure enough, I dashed all their hopes the instant that I was like, oh, I quit my job. You are unemployed? My daughter, you are unemployed? No, no, no. See, I work from home, and, and I get to just decide. I have a laptop lifestyle. Oh, so you are unemployed. <laughs> it's how it goes. So I first thing, before I even jump in, I got to get evidence. We're going to take a little selfie, right? I want to take a selfie because I have got to prove to my parents that I work, right? <laughs> so here we go. You got to, um, so this is my wig, Rebecca. Um, she's fabulous. I just need everyone to point to her, right? Just be like, like that, all right, ready? Count of three, let's do this. Don't let me down, so necessary, ready? Yes, one, two, three. Awesome, thank you guys all for helping my parents keep me in the will, God bless you. All right, <laughs> so today I'm here to talk to you guys about the rich friend mindset. Guys, this is gonna be fun, but before we jump in, let me tell you a little about myself. Now. I built a seven-figure business, and I did that in just 18 months, with a z with starting with zero list, right? And I did all of it live streaming. I spend less than $2,000 a year on Facebook ads. So it is, I know, everyone's like, yes, I'm about that debt-free life. So I just want to say for everyone who's missing church today, because I'm a church girl, feel free to church grunt. I'm here for it. You don't know what a church grunt is? It's going, mmm, come on, Nicole, yes, preach, okay? I receive that, okay? I receive that. So let's just do a practice one together, right? I'm gonna say something amazing and entirely accurate. I exfoliate, my skin is radiant, and you guys are gonna go? Yes! This is going to be a very good speech. So I worked in corporate America and I was the closer, right? My job was to go in there and clinch the deal. I had to sell it, I had to make it work, and I had to find that connection. Um, since then, after quitting my job on Periscope in front of 10,000 people, because you know, what better way to make sure you never go back to corporate than to scorch the earth behind you? <laughs> I, I've been blessed to be able to have keynote speaking engagements with Dave Ramsey, Shalene Johnson, Brendan Burchard, uh, Seth Godin, right, right? How awesome is that, you know? Um, and some guy named Nathan Barry, like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so uh, in my day to day, I get to be a monetization coach to entrepreneurs, to everyday people like you, making sure that you are making money doing what you love. So bonus facts, I'm a real person too, right? My favorite wig, Rebecca, she's here. It's important, she likes to upstage me, so I just, I always like just give her her time. Um, I, I'm also an adoptive mom to three sisters. I have a five-year-old, a 15, thank you, thank you. Thank you guys so much. Yes, I have a five-year-old, a 15-year-old, and a 17-year-old. My 17-year-old is getting ready to go to college, and um, I've been married for eight years to this round Jewish lawyer named the Hubbin. Right there. Guys, I have a type, I have a type, okay? <laughs> um, I was on Wheel of Fortune in 2005, um, and I actually came in second to Wendy from Wisconsin who won a Saturn Sky, whatever. I'm not sensitive about it, it's a little too soon. <laughs> and because I wanna make sure that you leave here feeling like you learned something, I got a little life tip for you. So for those of you guys who are new, raise your hand if you're new to Boise, if this is your first time. Yes, good, good, good. Well, I want to help you talk like a local. I'm from DC, so of course I want to help you talk like a local, right? So <laughs> Boise is not pronounced Boise, right? Guys, locals here, how is it actually pronounced? Boise. You hear that? 
it's boy C, right? So you want to blend. I can't blend. I'm the only black person here. However, you can blend, right? Right, brother in the front is like, listen, <laughs> right? He's like, I relate, girl. I was excited to see you, right? <laughs> no, you pronounce it boy C, all right, guys? So now we're all, now we're all acclimated. Now we're comfortable. So let's talk about the rich friend mindset. Now, I've got an awesome community of entrepreneurs that learn from me every single day. And I call them rich friends. And why do I call them rich friends? Because they're rich in purpose, because they're rich in mission, because they're rich in values, because they're rich in faith. And oftentimes, we correlate being rich with money. And you guys are all rich right now. But there are a couple of things that I want to do to help you dismantle the excuses that are in your life, help you accept and receive the purpose that's in front of you, and become better bloggers and business owners. So. I blog too. I started off with a blog all about hair. Who would have thought, right? <laughs> so about six years ago, I shaved all my hair off and I documented myself growing it back naturally without chemicals. I figured I'm so good looking, I exfoliate so frequently, and my skin's so radiant, I don't need hair. You know what I mean? I don't need hair. So under Rebecca, I, I have all my hair back, but starting my blogging process was amazing and I was profitable within 90 days. I was making money on my blog. I did not do free from day one in hopes of eventually getting paid. I started right way, right from the beginning. And I'll be talking to you guys more about that in my workshop at 11.15. Write that down. In my workshop right here, 11.15. <laughs> but so far to date, I have over 500 articles that I've written. I've, I have had events, ads, and sponsorships specifically for this brand, over 50 of them. And I'm fully monetized today. So I haven't posted on that blog in two years, and it still generates me just under $1,000 a month without any effort. So here's a truth moment for you. You've been caring about the wrong things. And you heard my friend Levi talk about it. We worry so much about the numbers, and the subscribers, and the followers, and the views, and the clicks. And we spend so much time investing ourselves in these things as if they're what matter. But you know what? They're just distractions from your excellence. All they are is an opportunity for you to make excuses. Well, my, my business isn't doing well because I don't have enough subscribers. Or my business isn't doing well because I don't have enough followers. But you guys, that's part of it. But that's not all of it. Now, excuses are tools of incompetence. And those that specialize in them are seldom good at anything else. So you listen, yes, right? Right? Thank you for remembering the lesson, right? That hit you. You had that moment. We had a moment right there, right? So let's read this together, guys, because you want to make sure you hold this one in. You want to repeat it, right? We're not going to let excuses keep us from our excellence. Am I right? Mm, yes. So what? One, two, three. Excuses are tools of incompetence. Those who specialize in them are seldom good at anything else. Ooh, you guys felt that, right? Who thought they were going to get a little church this morning? You weren't ready for it, right? You were ready for it. Yes, you're here for it, though. Nice. What I need you worried about every single day in your business is this. Impact. Who are you trying to help? If you keep this at your forefront in everything you do, whether it is, do I go to this conference today? Do I attend this workshop with Nicole? Of course I do. Do I you know, answer these comments? Do I make this video? Do I lay this flat lay? Do I cook this recipe? If you keep this at the forefront of what you do, you're already positioning yourself to be focused on profitability and not just popularity. So these are the things that every rich friend holds. And I want you guys to be rich friends, so we're going to go over these one by one. Now, the first thing about rich friends is that we don't do free, right? We act like a business to get paid like one. And I'm going to, yes, listen, and I'm about to dive into that a little more. <laughs> we do the work, because your work ethic is your market differentiator. You want to stand out, you better work hard. We automate our systems, and we don't automate our relationships, right? We're in the business of people, all of us. We disrupt, and we don't duplicate. There's already people out there who are doing certain things, and you are unique and individual in your divine calling, and you have every right to put that out there. And lastly, of course, you're not Kim Kardashian. Let's keep it all the way real, all right? You're not. So we got to make sure that we're doing something to earn all the great things that are coming to us. So let's take this one by one. The first thing, we don't do free. <sighs> Y'all, the word free makes me itch. I'm not even kidding. I had to hydrate. I had to stretch to just get myself ready to say it this often. I am allergic to free, 
right? Free is the new F word, okay? <laughs> like, I want you to receive that. We don't do free. Say it with me. We don't do free, okay? I, one more time for the people in the back. We don't do free. Oh, because listen, you're worth it, right? You're worth it. You're out here paying for what? Your outfits to photograph. You're paying photographers for it to look good. You're paying editors to help with your video, right? Or you're spending the 12 hours doing it yourself. You're not amateurs. You're here studying. You're taking notes. You invested in this opportunity. So why on earth are you out there doing free? Saying, oh yeah, I'll, I'll post that entire campaign for you if you hopefully share it, and I hopefully get clicks, but I pay $500 to make it happen. That's doing free. You're investing time and money in your business every single day. And you're saying that your business is the thing you love, right? It's your purpose. It's what you're here to do. Well, do you want to keep living in it? <laughs> then somebody's got to pay those bills. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So if you want to be a business, you need to act like one. We don't walk into Target and just say, oh, guys, <sighs> Target, I know that you opened this because this store here because you love it so much. I'm just gonna take all of these things, guys, because I just want you to be able to live in your purpose and I'm just so glad you opened this store. I'm gonna go ahead and take this shirt. Like, no, you pay, right? Because they're a business. And they can love what they're doing and still put an invoice behind it. And I expect you guys to do the same thing too. Now, there are exceptions, the three C's, right? We do free for church, we do free for charity, and we do free for children. But that's it. Anytime something else comes across your plate, whether it's a brand opportunity or somebody asking you to help them get started with their blog, right, or someone who's like, oh, you take such great pictures, can you take pictures for me? You need to say to yourself, hmm, what sort of time am I putting in this? How many hours is this going to take me? Is this something where putting my time here is a better investment than putting time into my own brand? If so, if you're asking yourself that question, you may need to send an invoice first, right? So what don't we do? That's right. Whew, I'm ready to stop talking about it, though. All right. <laughs> Next, we do the work, right? We do the work. You guys hear it all the time, but doing the work is the answer to this question. We're always worried about visibility. How do, I, how do I look different, right? There's so many people who are out there sharing recipes. There's so many people out there that are super popular sharing their, their outfits and their, their hair things and their beauty. Well, how do I stand out? Well, listen, the best way to stand out is to work harder than them. And I'm not talking about pointless, every single day hustle that doesn't include being intentional in your action. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about taking the initiative to get out there and build something great and show up for yourself, being internally motivated, doing what you'll say you'll do. If you're gonna host a giveaway, make sure you put your stuff in the mail, right? You know, if you're gonna go out there and you're saying, guys, I'm gonna post every Tuesday and every Friday, actually doing that. Right? How many people fall off of blogging because they're inconsistent? Raise your hand, just be honest, right? We're all friends in this room. Raise your hand if consistency is tough. Am I right? It's tough, it's the hardest challenge. But understand that if you guys look around and you're saying, oh my gosh, all these people have a hard time being consistent, if you start being consistent, how much stronger of a blogger are you, right? How much of your competition have you eliminated? Be consistent, do the work. If you want to build what others only dream about, you have to do what they're only going to talk about. People talk all day about starting a blog. They'll pay for a conference, they'll take the notes, they'll get the coach, they'll buy the systems, they'll start the process, and they'll never write a single blog post. Do it. Do the work. Now, I want to tell you a story about when I first started blogging, and this is an example of doing the work, right? I went to an event that I knew would have a lot of popular bloggers. I, I wasn't paid, but I knew that if I go to that event, I'd be able to make good connections, I'd be able to network, I'd have the opportunity to get some free stuff that I could review. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna show up. This, this event should be good. And I did a little research in advance, and we'll talk about this more in my session, how to really capitalize on those opportunities to engage brands and get paid from it. But I went to this event, and when I arrived, I introduced myself to the head of a major, it was, I'll just say L'Oreal. And so, so I like, we friends. So to L'Oreal, who was there on site, and they were hosting a blogger panel, but I wasn't part of it. And you know that that, I mean, I was devastated. I was like, how could you, what? You know, like, you don't know who I am, that's fine. <laughs> so I went ahead and I introduced myself and I said, hey, you know, just to let you know, I'm here to support you. If there's anything I can do to help today, if you need somebody to fill in, if something comes up, if you need an MC, I just want to let you know that I am here to support you. So here's my information and just give me a call if you need me. And I went about my way, but I made sure that I would be in that session later. Well, maybe just 10 minutes before I showed up, they told me, hey, my phone rang, I called. I was like, oh my gosh, what is it? So I run back and they're like, yeah, well, one of our bloggers never showed up. 
right? She never showed up. This was a blogger who was known for diva antics, super popular, had all the numbers, right? But didn't show up. And they were like, would you mind popping in on this panel? And I was like, absolutely. Hopped right on stage, slayed up and down, delivered right, okay? Crushed it, flipped my wig, and walked off like a boss, okay? <laughs> okay, right, you know? Because that's what you have to do. And you better believe that the following year, they brought me back, and I made several thousand dollars on that appearance. Why? Because I wasn't afraid to do the work. You put me on the spot, but I'll show up and I'll show out. And you have to do the same thing if you're trying to get ahead. Now this next piece, this is your everyday, right? You guys hear about automation all the time, right? Like the best way to do it is to just get it going while you're sleeping, right? Like you want those, you want those emails coming in, you want that interaction happening, you need to automate, automate, automate. Well, I wanna throw in a little caveat. We automate our systems, but we don't automate our relationships. You are in the business of people, so Understand that those views, those clicks, those reads, that co the commentary, the engagement, those all have people behind them. They're not just numbers. So getting into your comments, one of the first things I did as a successful blogger to really get my name out there was to introduce myself to people. So I, came, I would come to an event like this and make sure I met as many people as possible <laughs> because not only could they be business partners, but they could be readers and consumers and fans and clients. And the same thing applies on my Instagram. In the very beginning, I was answering comments every single day. I was, whenever I get lost, whenever I feel like I'm failing, I go back to the basics. I make sure that I'm answering emails. I answer, when I first, I have a seven figure business, I still answer my own email. I get in there every single day and I respond to people because it keeps me in touch with my business and it keeps them in touch with me. Understand that what people are looking for when they come to you, sure, they might like a good recipe or they wanna know about organization or something cool with crafting, but they wanna be your friend. They wanna have that relationship, right? How many of you guys here are like, oh my God, Nicole, you are my friend in my head, right? Right? Like, I want to hang with her. Raise your hand, don't lie. Yes, right? All of you guys are like, oh my gosh, like, I don't care about all these other speakers, like Seth Godin, who's that? Like, right? Like, you're really like, right, right, right? No, Seth is awesome, you guys don't miss it. But engagement is king, right? It's king, and it's important that you're doing that. So you get those surveys, you throw out feed and get feedback, follow up on it, reach out to people. One of the things that I do in my business that people never expect is I call people. I always tell, if you're gonna email me, put your number in it, because I might pick up the phone and call you back. I don't have time to read emails, I got kids, I'm busy. So like I might be in the middle driving to summer camp and I'm calling someone and I'm like, hey, it's Nicole. And they're like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you emailed me, so what's going on and all that good stuff. And that personal connection cannot be replaced. That's part of doing things that other people won't do. It's not automating the systems. Sure, they got into my email funnel however way they got in there, sure, because of an opt-in or whatever, but having that personal contact, that single touch right, that is the thing that's gonna make them a buyer for life. Oh, everyone's just like, yes, Nicole, <laughs> right? It's gonna make them a buyer for life. And I love you right here, you're like just, you're like, yes, Nicole, yes, I'm just getting all of this, I'm loving it, I'm loving it. So we want to disrupt and we don't want to duplicate. So what does that look like, right, if we're disruptors? Well, to disrupt and not duplicate means that there are enough badass, super savvy, glitter toss boss babes out there, okay? How many of you guys seen those ads, right? It's like, you know, everybody out there is like, oh my gosh, and it's like, I'm sassy, I'm this, and I have my flat leg. Listen, if you hate editing your Instagram page to make it look so flawlessly beautiful every single day, don't do it. Oh my God, what? You feel free now, right? Don't do it. Don't do it. Be yourself, right? Be yourself. Be authentic. Be excellent where you are. Be great in the place and space that's right for you. So I knew that I was not cut out for this heavy editing Steven Spielberg YouTube life. I'm not about it. Like, just not doing it, not spending 12 hours, never. Doesn't mean I'm not good on video. Guys, look at me in real life, you know? Like, I'm good on video, you know? <laughs> so what I do is live streaming because it's easy, it's raw, it's uncut, it's there. You'll, you won't catch me on YouTube. You know, if anything, you'll see one of my YouTube videos popped up there. My YouTube videos, they're crappy, they're not fancy. There's no music, there's no voiceover, there's no like funny images like, 
<laughs> like, you're not going to see any of that, you know? You're not going to, because I just, I don't have time for it, and it doesn't bring me joy. It doesn't make my heart sing, so I'm not going to do it. People can tell if you're not being authentic, even in your work. Sure, they love a curated timeline, but let's make no mistake, we're not Vogue. Be honest, you know? So, yes, preach, right? Yes. <laughs> so, understand and keep in mind that you have your own unique message and divine calling. So, I am a woman of faith, so one of my verses that really inspired and changed my life was 1 Peter 4.10. Now, 1 Peter 4.10 says that every single one of us has a unique gift that is given to us by God that is specifically assigned to us in order for us to be a good steward to others. You know, so if you think about that, right, if you say to yourself, man, I have a unique calling that is my own, but it's specifically to engage and to use and to help inspire others and to change their lives, like, you better get out there and you better be yourself. You can't do what everyone else is doing. You can learn from their lessons, you can skip some of the hard stuff, but you have to be yourself, right? And remember, innovation is sustainable. Being new, being fresh, coming out with something that changes lives, that makes people say, wow, that's something you can keep on doing every single day. But if you're just copying what everyone else does, well, you're always a step behind. And lastly, this. <sighs> Go ahead, clap, clap on this. Listen, every brand I have ever worked with has asked me to put this sign up. You are not Kim Kardashian, okay? Anybody who thinks they can have an Instagram timeline that is just nothing but selfies in this day and age is, is not hungry enough. If you really want to build a business that's going to thrive, you need to get hungry. You need to be about chasing it. You need to be about pitching clients. You need to be about reaching out. You need to be about telling brands where you are. If people don't know where you are, they can't find you to pay you. So you better believe that you need to humble yourself and not say, oh, if I build it, they will come. If I look cute enough, they will come. I will spend more time on my flat lay because that's what matters rather than getting out there and making sure I'm serving because you're not Kim Kardashian. You can't just show up, right? So when you go to an event, you need to be the first one in asking how you can help set, out, set up and you need to be the last one out asking how you can help clean up because humbling yourself that way is how you actually build relationships. That's how I distinguish myself from the bloggers who would float in there on diva antics asking for a bowl of chips that are unbroken, you know? <laughs> and while I'm there saying like, you need help unpacking this box? Anybody got a broom? You know, and they're just like, you know what? That Nicole's someone we wanna have around every single time. And that's the person that I wanna cut checks to. And getting that opportunity is the thing that will distinguish everything for your business and your brand. So you need to roll up your sleeves and get in there and do the dirty work. Now, when you come to events like this, understand that making the time to make friends is actually the thing that's going to make you money, right? How many of you guys here are like, man, I wonder if that Nicole could probably help me make money, right? You guys kind of wondering, right? Yeah, I know, you're like, yeah, mm, you know? I, I'm telling you, getting out to these events and engaging, talking to people, looking for opportunity, that's what's gonna do it. And then this last part, it's only two words and it doesn't seem as relevant, but remember that story I told you earlier? When you get that opportunity to shine, when you land that brand partnership, it's not the time to slack off. It's not the time to question yourself because you already got it, which means you're worth it, right? It's not the time to say to yourself, oh, I don't know if you know, this blogger friend's gonna wanna work with me or I don't know if this Instagram loop is gonna work or I don't know if you know, this YouTube partnership is legitimate. No, it's the time to slay and deliver. You show up, you show out, and you give your very, very best because that's what people are looking for. If a brand event fails, it's partly your fault. If, if the ad doesn't do well, it's partly your fault. You have to take ownership. Th these brands wanna work with you in a partnership capacity. They're not just looking to cut a check to you and say just do your thing. C talk to them, engage with them, follow up with them, act like a business so you can get paid like one. So let's do a little recap. And I expect this to be engaged. You guys, I hope you took notes. Ready? All right. <laughs> so do we do free? No. Ooh, oh, I love it. Ready? Do we do free? No. Yes. Are we afraid of work? No. Are we going to do the work? Yes. That's right. So what do we automate then? Do we automate relationships? No. What are we actually automating? Systems. Oh, I love it. A smart crew here. Now, we definitely want to make sure we're disruptors. So if we're disrupting, what are we not doing? Duplicating. Oh, brilliant. I love this. And most importantly, especially for you, because you're really, really cute, and I want to make sure you're not just relying on your selfies, okay? <laughs> especially for you. We are not, I'm looking at you, yes you, sunglasses, cute blonde, yes you. <laughs> 
All right, guys. So who are we not, right? Who are we not? That's right, because we have to do the work. Guys, we are all officially rich friends. Hey, rich friend. <laughs> this was so much fun. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> I will see you at 11.15, right? I'll be right here. Guys, it was a pleasure. See you soon.